Hey guys, welcome to Teal House Farm. Today we are going to try some Tatler canning lids that were given to us by a viewer. I'm excited to give these a try. I've never used them before. We'll see how we like them compared to a traditional canning lid. And I'll also talk about the cost savings long term if there are any um, and why people would choose to use these and show you some other options for what I consider almost no waste, very low waste canning. Um, if you are watching this from America, you know that tra tra traditional canning jars from America have a disposable lid, the disposable metal lid. It's not like that everywhere around the world and there are other options in America as well, but we just don't see them as much. So I'm gonna kind of show you what those look like and talk a little bit about them and give these Tatler lids a try and see how I like them. I promised the girls they could help me and right now they are moving wood into the mud room and Sam is going to milk our goat. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get things set up so once they come back in we'll warm them up with some hot cocoa and then we will make some jam. And I will apologize in advance if you hear some weird noises in the background of this video. We did just have a baby goat join us. Um, and she is inside today because of the extreme cold and snowstorm and her mommy was not doing a good job uh, Looking out for her. So we're taking care of her inside and like always there's always babies around here, too So always some background noise. Hi happy baby But okay, let's get started So anytime I try something new in the world of canning when it comes to equipment I always do it on jams or jellies and the reason for that is because if it just totally doesn't work the canning process jams or jellies have so much sugar in them that they're okay at room temperature for quite a while so then i can just stick them in my freezer if we got a bunch of no no good seals and i don't have to worry about wasting anything micah loves strawberry jam and we are totally out of strawberry jam so i just went to the store bought some frozen strawberries and we're just gonna make some strawberry jam for her uh to test these out on you did it Okay, you guys want to make some hot cocoa and then we'll make some yeah, strawberry mom. jam? Mom, we'll the <laughs> when it comes to jam and jelly making, I do not get creative or ambitious. I love a sure gel powdered pectin and I just follow the instructions inside the box. Jams and jellies need... Okay, let's get down. Get down. Hey, uh, no, you are not a bunch of monkeys. Can I get my farm? I will get you a farm, farm sweet farm mug. I believe it's in there. I'll wash it for you. Here you go, Ivy. Um, okay. okay. Jams and jellies. Um, it's a lot of science to get them to set, and things like this take the science and the math work out of it for you. You just follow the recipe, and it works great every time. You can absolutely do it other ways with using honey instead of sugar and things like that. But then you need to do a lot of math and science on your own. You can make your own pectin. It goes on and on. I keep it simple. We're gonna use the box, follow the instructions, and it'll come out great every time. We have three pounds of strawberries. A uh, box of pectin, our new lids, a bunch of pint jars. Uh, you could do half pints as well, but we're a big family, so we just need to make more or use larger jars. And seven cups of sugar. So these are frozen strawberries, so I'm going to dump them in a big bowl and just let them defrost for a little bit and then mash them up. We need five cups of mashed berries, and I think three pounds will get me pretty close. We'll see. Because we are going to be water bath canning, you don't need to pressure can with jam, it's water bath canning. Um, I am boiling the jars on the stove to sterilize them. It's easiest to do this in the dishwasher, but I don't have a dishwasher. Dishwasher will wash them, sterilize them, and keep them warm for you. But um, if you don't have a dishwasher, you need to wash them in hot soapy water and rinse them. Put them in a big pot of water on the stove and boil them um, for 10 minutes and then we're gonna take them um, in and then you can you can can't you're supposed to can them right out of that boiling water but I can't fit my big canner and then a big pot to make the jelly on and a big pot to fill the jars my stove isn't very wide it's a small stove 
So I can't do that. So what I do is I then take the hot jars out of the boiling water, put them on a cookie sheet, put them in the oven on 225, and that keeps them warm that way. That's what I do. Um, but while this is going, I'm going to show you a little bit about the difference between the jars and the price difference so you can see if this is a good option for you. Okay, so I did a little bit of math for you to save you the time later and I'm going to show you the options. So this is from an American perspective. I know in European countries there are a lot of other options, which is amazing, but um, in America we're a little more limited, I feel like, on what's available or what's commercially widely available to use for canning. In almost every American household, we have the traditional ball or cur or anchor glass canning jar with the metal lid and ring. And you are not supposed to reuse the metal lids. I'll tell you the truth. Sometimes I do. But the idea is that once it's used, to get these off, you either end up deforming the lid, like this one you can see had to be dented, or the rubber, or whatever this, I think it's rubber, little seal inside loses its integrity and you won't get a good seal. I'll be perfectly honest. When I can things like jelly or juices or things that have very um, short amounts of time in canners, I find that it doesn't, I don't have problems with reusing the lids. Okay, if it's something like meat where you basically need a crowbar to pry the can off when it's time to eat, um, then the lids are too dented and too damaged to reuse. Again, the general recommendation is that you never ever reuse them. So this setup um, for a pint jar where we live in America, which is central in Missouri, and um, at Walmart, I just went and looked, it was $10 for a 12 pack, so that's 83 cents per pint jar. Um, so you spend 83 cents, you get to keep the jar and the ring and reuse them, but you do have to buy a new lid every time, supposedly, so we'll say almost every time. And these lids are 25 cents each. That's not really that much money, but you think about it, basically every time you can, you're going to have to put down three or four dollars to buy new lids, okay? And that does, if you're someone like me who does a ton of canning, that actually does add up over the year. I mean, I can five or six hundred jars in a year, and I'm... I mean that's gonna that's gonna add up to be like a hundred dollars right every year just on lids I mean that, that and it's also wasteful I mean I don't know maybe you could recycle these but I have feeling the rubber inside means that you can't really so I don't recycle them maybe I'm supposed to and you could let me know that I should um, but I figured that these are not recyclable so it's something that's just going in the trash can to the landfill. The option that we're trying today, which is new for me, are these Tatler lids. And these are plastic, BPA-free plastic, which is good. So you get a lid, like this, which is very similar to that, right? But the difference here, we have a rubber ring that's removable, um, goes on like that, and this seals the jar. And these are heavy-duty plastic. You can get them on and off the jar without damaging the lid or damaging the ring. I did some Googling just to see if they truly are infinitely reusable and it seems a lot of people say that eventually your rubber is going to lose its integrity. It's going to get stretched out or it's going to get brittle, but that if you follow the care instructions with gentle washing, um, that this should last you um, somewhere around 20 to 25 uses, which is, you know, a long time, you know, if you only can use each one a couple times a year because it's sitting on your shelf, I mean, you're going to get 10 years out of these lids, which is amazing. And that people say that this is truly infinitely reusable. They really don't wear out. Um, your initial cost for the jar is the same. You do not buy a special jar. You use your ball jar again. So that's going to be your 83 cents to get started with the jar, but then you're going to need to buy these lids, and the lids uh, right now on Amazon are $16 for a 12 pack. Now that price has been all over the place. When the pandemic started, these went up to like $30 for a 12 pack. So right now though, they're $16 a 12 pack. That's $1.33 a lid. So if you do the math, basically every time you buy five of these or five and a half of these, you've bought one of these. So after five and a half, so six uses, these have completely paid for themselves. So it seems like if they really do last as long as they say they do, it's a little bit of an upfront cost, but it's an amazing investment. Plus you're not putting anything in the trash can. You're opening your jar and you're reusing the jar again and all the lid parts again and again and again. Nothing goes in the trash. Nothing has to uh, waste energy in recycling. My third option that I have around here that I've used several times are these WEC 
jars. Now, Weck jars are much more common from what I understand in Germany and uh, other European countries. And they're similar to the Tetler jar lids in the sense that you have a reusable lid. In this case, it's glass, which I like. And you have a rubber ring. And these have um, clamps. Place your seal here. And then you clamp down. Um, you want them evenly on each side. I, I didn't put them on quite right. You'd have it directly across. But And then you can it like that. And then after 24 hours, you pop the metal clamps off and it stays sealed. I have a video on the first time that I used these. I'll link that below if you want to watch the whole process. This did have a little bit of a learning curve. But I love the fact that this is a glass top not a plastic top. So this jar I feel like is genuinely recyclable because glass is very easy um, on the environment to recycle and energy wise. So if you drop one and break it or it just breaks over time, um, I know that basically it can be totally reused. These though are much more expensive. This whole set this whole setup, it's $19 for a half dozen. So $19 for six of these. So that's $3.16 a jar. Again, your your basic setup, basic American canning setup is 83 cents a jar. This is four times as expensive, which over time, you know, you use these four times and then you're not having to buy any replacement parts. It's paid for itself, which is amazing. Um, but that's a huge upfront cost. It, it can already feel like these are expensive when you're just getting starting canning and are starting your setup it can really add up and it makes it feel like canning is very expensive at first. I can't imagine what it would feel like trying to start with these. And then the only other downside to these from an American standpoint is that these come in metric sizes. These come in American sizes. So your half pint, your pint, your quart, your half gallon. These are all in quarter liters, half liters, liter jars. Um, so the American canning recipes always go for these. And then you try to can in these, and it's an in-between size, so you just always size up. So this is smaller than a pint, but I would can it like a pint because it's larger than a half pint, if that makes sense. That's just a little deal. It's not really a big deal, but it does kind of annoy me because recipes are all portioned out to fit in a certain number of half pints, pints, or quarts, and then you throw in a weird quarter liter, <laughs> and nothing adds up, and you have a weird amount left over. So that's all the jars and what they cost. Um, but let's go ahead and give these a try. or not boiling, almost boiling water from the canner. You don't want it boiling yet, just really hot. And uh, I put the lids and rings in here. Like that, to scald them. And now we're going to wipe the jars Ivy's filling with a clean, uh, damp cloth to get any residue off of it, and then place the lids on top. If you've seen the bowl in the picture, it's just for me and Mikey. So don't worry. It's okay. Okay. Mac and cheese. Yeah, I gotta clean this up. Well, why don't you get a mac and cheese out of the closet? Mac and cheese tonight. Okay, here is the finished product. We're gonna go ahead and remove the rings because it's been 24 hours. So if you're looking at this jam being like that's really foamy it's because I don't care about the foam you can absolutely add a little butter to the recipe when you're making the jam it prevents the foam my grandmother used to always scrape the foam off it is a hundred percent just um, aesthetics okay my kids end up destroying jelly anyway because they just 
clobber it with a knife as soon as they open it so I don't really care if there's a little bit about foam on top so it's gonna get mixed in these all feel nice and sealed this worked really well um, but if you don't like how it looks you can absolutely scrape it off um, before you jar it yeah so these all feel really tight great seals on all of them so wonderful We'll see how easy they are to open when it's time, but I imagine it's like the Weck jars where you pull the little tab. Where is that? Oh, maybe there, aren't, there isn't a tab on these. So, um, never mind about that. But I feel like get a little spoon under there, they'll pop right off. That's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for watching. Happy canning and see you soon.